folks had a great night, slept really well. It's hard to not have a great view everywhere you look here. And uh, so this has been a really cool place. We've got to get an early start this morning because this next leg is 95, 99 miles, somewhere in there, I forget. So we got to go back down to Lone Pine, top up the battery for, I don't know, probably 15 or 20 minutes, and then hit the road. So we just left Lone Pine. We just uh, unplugged from the supercharger. We were there about 40 minutes, a little longer than I thought, but we were just trying to top up the battery. Batteries charge very slowly at the end. The next leg is uh, 99 and a half miles and 4,000 feet of elevation gain. So this is gonna be the nail biter of the day. You know, as far as this being a good tow vehicle, except for the range part, it feels pretty outstanding. It's got air suspension, so it's able to level it to counteract the tongue weight of the trailer. It accelerates and decelerates very smoothly, and it has plenty of beans. And uh, the regenerative braking that all electric cars have, where they basically use the magnetism in the motor to slow the car down, works really well with a trailer back there. I mean, I can come almost to a complete stop without using the brake pedal uh, and that's great because all that energy is going back into the battery when that's going on. We're about a third of the way to Mammoth and uh, I'm looking at the range meters and it's not looking great. The original projection was we'd arrive with 20% battery. It's dropped to 15% battery. We still have a big uh, climb ahead of us. So what I've done is I've trimmed uh, two miles an hour off our speed, but let's see if that helps. And I'm keeping one eye on the meter, trying to see if the uh, projected battery life at the end point uh, maybe rises a little bit. That doesn't mean I'm generating electricity, it just means I'm using it at a less rapid pace, which will leave me with a little bit more when I get there. This is kind of the feeling I had yesterday at Inyo Kern and I made the decision to hop off and charge at that supercharger, but I don't have that option today. I've got to go to Mammoth. There's no choice. I mean, the worst case scenario is I disconnect the trailer, I leave it by the side of the road, drive into town without the trailer, top up, come back, get the trailer, and then keep going. But I don't want to do that. <laughs> Aerodynamic drag is the big enemy here. Not necessarily the weight of the trailer, but just the fact that there's a box behind me that's like a little bit of a parachute. Aerodynamic drag goes up with a square of speed, so uh, the faster you go, the drag really you know, gets big in a hurry. So uh, every little bit you can trim off on the speed will help. Instead of going 55, I'm going 53. It doesn't sound like much, but I'm only looking for a couple of percent here. About 25 minutes ago, I made the decision. I dropped my speed from 55 to 53, and I think that stabilized the situation because we're still kind of where we were when I made that speed change, so I think uh, that's good. Um, and we're just kind of cruising up the grade. We've only got 23 miles to go. The consumption meter is pegged. This is the last five minutes, so we've been on the grade for more than five minutes. If I go to 15, you can see here's where the grade started. If I go to 30, you get a better picture of what we were doing as we went through Bishop and then hit the grade. Um, all of these projections are dire when it comes to, you know, this is expecting me to continue to driving like I am right now all the way to Mammoth. It'll adjust when the grade levels off when we get to the top, which is about to happen. So if you like data, this car will give you more data than you know what to do with. Sometimes I know what to do with it, and other times it just freaks me out. <laughs> We're rolling into Mammoth Lakes. We've got 13% battery left. It looked like uh, the decision to cut my speed helped out, and uh, we're here. 
One thing I noticed when I drove our Tesla Model S to New York on the supercharger network and we're noticing is doubly true here is there's this Zen quality to traveling on a supercharger network. It's not like you dive into a gas station, fill up in five minutes, go in and buy a microwave burrito and get back on the road because you got to get there. Here you can't do that even if you wanted to. That kind of takes the whole burden off of where do we stop? All of that stuff is built in because you're going to be here an hour. You can take care of everything. You can chill. You get back in the car and you're on the road. So we're making good time on the road to uh, our next stop at Topaz Lake from Mammoth Lakes and uh, it's mostly downhill. It's still about 96 miles but downhill trend so we got plenty of battery. We decided we'd take a nice little side trip on this dirt road, check out the view here and stretch our legs. And we finally kind of got uh, the air conditioning figured out. It turns out that we had the rear AC on and that was draining a little bit more. So we turned that off because nobody's sitting back there. Got the sunshade such as it is overhead. So that's cutting down on the radiant heat from the top. And now uh, we're all happy and uh, it's pretty comfy in there. And we got plenty of range. So yeah, maybe uh, on our way back when we have to go up on this route, it might be a different uh, situation, but today we're loving it. We're here. And I've never been so happy to see a detour road close sign in my life because it made us go around the long way on a dirt road through the forest that was just spectacular. We splashed through little mud puddles, which is always good. And now we're here. We've got a great, great campsite uh, and we're ready to uh, relax and watch the sun go down. Mm -hmm. 